Good morning. morning. It's nice to see you all here today. We've got a couple of quick announcements. Uh, Very short, we have McRest coming up. You know, traditionally we've done McRest in September. We've been able to have that moved until June. And that's good because that means the school will be out. We won't have some of the hassles we've had in the past. But what it also means is we still have to fill up all the help we need. So please take a look at the table, see where you may be able to help. Uh, see what can be done uh, to help the homeless that are in our communities. And uh, please, please do serve in that way. Also, we need help with the garden club to take care of the gardens that are around the building. If you're interested in that, please let me know, and we'll get you a garden, and you can start working, okay? Uh, Right now, wave to one another and greetings.
This is the day which the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Sanctify us in your truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Acts chapter 4. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the people came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning the, holy, the good deed done to a crippled man, by what means has this man been healed? Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this man... By him, this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm. 
the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He leads Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The epistles from 1st John chapter 3. St. John writes, By this we know love, that he lay down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and see his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we know that we are of the truth and reassure our hearts before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the, for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is from John chapter 10. We read together. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So they will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. 
You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath by, by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. We confess the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Friends, I have good news. Our good shepherd has laid down his life for the sheep. 
And our good shepherd has taken up his life again. And because of him, we also will live forever. But before we place all the focus on the good shepherd, we should also take a moment to talk about the bad shepherds. You see, shepherd is an ancient metaphor for a ruler, a leader. And before Jesus came, the Jewish people had many, many bad shepherds. In Ezekiel 34, God prophesies against all these bad shepherds, and he promises that one day he'll replace them by setting up one good shepherd, his servant David, who will care for the people. And so when Jesus calls himself the good shepherd, not only is he calling himself the son of David and the fulfillment of Ezekiel 34, but he's labeling the Pharisees and the Sadducees as the bad shepherds, the bad shepherds of the prophecy. And what makes them so bad? Well, first, their hearts, for they care nothing for the sheep. They have not love for God or neighbor. But secondly, even if they did care, they have bad theology. They're feeding the people half-truths and leading them astray. Ezekiel explains. He says, first of all, these bad shepherds never warn the unrepentant sinners. When they see someone in spiritual danger, heading off into a life of sin, they say nothing because frankly, it's just easier to avoid conflict. They avoid persecution by never confronting proud sinners. But secondly, they also never give grace to lowly sinners. When they see a person saddened by sin, a poor little sheep sick with its wool matted down, these bad shepherds never apply the medicine. They don't preach the gospel. They don't comfort with the message of forgiveness. So the reason why they are bad is because they do the opposite of what they're supposed to. When they should shout, repent, they speak tenderly or not at all. And when they should speak tenderly, they instead burden the consciences of the people with only more and more rules. And Jesus is fed up with their leadership. So, in John 10, he is rebuking these bad shepherds. He calls them hired hands, thieves, perhaps even wolves. And Jesus is also making a promise to his sheep that he will be different. For he loves us, and he will give to each one of us exactly what we need. And how does Jesus care for you? Always through the Word, through the Word, the whole Word, and nothing but the Word. For the Word is that which properly convicts you when you've gone astray. Sometimes sheep need yanked out of a pit, and it's God's law that sometimes yanks us out. And then it is His gospel Word that comforts us and binds up our injuries. Yes, in every situation, the good shepherd will use his word to provide what is needed so that we might delight in his will and walk in his ways to the glory of his holy name. And whereas the bad shepherds care nothing for the sheep, the good shepherd does all things in our best interest. And even when his words seem harsh, we know he loves us, for he willingly gave up his life for us. Other shepherds use the sheep for their own ends. They take, they take, they take. But Jesus gives, and he gives, and he gives, because he loves his sheep. So now that we've discussed the bad shepherds and the one and only good shepherd, let's talk about sheep. Why does the Bible call us sheep? Well, some would say it's because sheep are stupid. Indeed, in thousands of pulpits right now, 
That's what the pastor is preaching. He's making the point that we, like sheep, are stupid. There was a recent viral video where a sheep is rescued out of a pit only to jump right back in. And pastors have been showing this video all week because that's so often us. Jesus saves us from a sin and then we foolishly trip right back into the same thing. So yes, sheep are foolish and sheep are vulnerable and sheep go astray. But that's not the comparison that Jesus makes in John 10. Rather, Jesus highlights this attribute of sheep, that the sheep know their shepherd's voice. Listen to what he says. Sheep hear their shepherd's voice. The shepherd calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow. They will flee from the stranger, for they do not know the voice of the stranger. But I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Notice that Jesus' goal here isn't to call his followers stupid. Rather, he's highlighting why his followers have rejected the Pharisees and Sadducees and have listened to him instead. For as Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The sheep know the good shepherd's voice. Truly, this is a fascinating aspect of sheep. Go on YouTube and, and search for sheep know shepherd's voice. And there are some great videos, videos of people visiting farms, and all the visitors try to call the sheep, and when the strangers call, the sheep just completely ignore them. However, once the farmer calls, all the sheep perk up, and then all the sheep come running. And it's this aspect of sheep that describes Christians. We may go astray, sadly too often, but once we hear the shepherd's voice, we perk up and we come running back. And how do we know his voice? Well, for that, the Holy Spirit gets all the credit. The Holy Spirit, whom we, we received in baptism, he gives us ears to hear. And over time, the Spirit trains us to listen better and better. The Spirit trains us in this room through the hymns and the liturgy and the readings and the sermons. The Spirit also trains us through our weekly Bible studies, which is why it's so important that you attend. And hopefully you're also being trained at home while reading your Bibles and having family devotions, perhaps reading portals of prayer, listening to Christian radio. In all these ways, the Spirit teaches us through the Word to distinguish the voice of Jesus from the other voices. Because to have faith means you know Jesus' voice and you trust that voice. It means you've become a sheep with ears that hear. For faith recognizes the voice of the Good Shepherd and faith trusts whatever He says. And you want to know why all this is so important? Because the devil will try to mimic the voice of Jesus. The devil will try to lure you away from the flock with half-truths, with a sweet voice, a voice that sort of sounds like Jesus. But those whom the Spirit has trained to distinguish voices will not be fooled. And turning our backs on Satan, we will run back to the Good Shepherd. So yes, we are like sheep in that we are very vulnerable. And yes, we are like sheep who go astray. And yes, a lot of our problems are our own fault because like sheep, we can act fairly foolishly. But the real important quality of sheep that Jesus wants you to know is that sheep listen. They listen only to their shepherd, which is key to our survival. Because it's his voice that will feed us and protect us and heal us and guide us. And as long as you're near Jesus, no wolf, no robber, not even death itself can ever harm you. 
For your shepherd has authority over life and death, and he will raise you up on the last day. Finally, I want to make a comment on a particular verse, verse 17, where Jesus says, for this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life to take it up again. It sounds peculiar. It sounds as if he's saying the Father only loves him because he dies and rises. But that can't be right because the Father and the Son have loved each other perfectly from all eternity. So that's not it. Rather, this is simply saying one reason the Father delights in his Son. Because of the Son's obedience. Because the Son obediently went forth to die and rise. If you're a parent, this will make sense. Imagine for a moment you tell your son that you'd like him to go do the dishes. And imagine he quickly smiles and says, yes, daddy, and goes sprinting off into the kitchen. And you look, and he's just in there working diligently with a happy heart. Would you not respond, I love that kid? Now, truth be told, you loved him anyway. But his obedience is just so delightful. Well, in a similar way, this is why the Father loves Jesus. Because when the Father sent him to this world to die and rise, the Son said, yes, Father. And he came without hesitation. He came to do what needed to be done. For the Father gave the command to save us, and the obedient Son did it. And now it is finished. And it's not only why the Father delights in Jesus, it's also why we delight in Jesus. How wonderful that even when I am a naughty sheep and have gone astray, even when, while we were still sinners, he followed the Father's plan and he came down from heaven for me. This is the reason I love him, because he first loved me and he died and rose for me. And it's the reason I want to follow him. Father, grant us your Holy Spirit that we might have ears to hear, that we might always follow the voice of your beloved Son. Amen.
We worship the Lord now with our offerings. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have called us as your sheep, that you have brought us into your flock. We pray that you'd ever grant us ears to hear your voice, that we would with joy follow you into salvation, and that our lives would be lived as those who serve and love. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for the family that you have gathered here at St. John. We thank you especially this day for Shirley Nelson, Cindy Newman, the Neiman family, Frida Nilsson, and the Nixon family. We pray that by your goodness they would grow in faith and love and rejoice at your gifts always and feast on your word. We pray for the persecuted church throughout the world, that by your goodness they may remain steadfast in the true faith, that your spirit would work in them that they might know your care and love even in the midst of persecution. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gifts of life that you grant to us. We thank you for birthdays and anniversaries. We thank you for the memories of loved ones. And we pray that we would remember all these people and their joys with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who mourn, especially for the family of Sally Walness as they mourn her death. Grant to them peace and understanding. Grant to them hope. Most importantly, grant to them the faith that they too might rest with you one day and rejoice in the promise of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would watch over this congregation that you would bless the mission and the ministry that you have given to us, that we might remember that we are here to feed those who are in our midst and to call those who do not yet to know the shepherd's voice. Grant that we may teach Jesus to all and that we may not tire of this, for this is to what you have given us uh, our call. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father that you have granted to us a congregation in, that belongs to the Missouri Synod. And we pray that you would bless our leaders. Be with President Harrison, be with President Meyer of the Michigan District. Grant that by your care, they might ever lead us into a true confession of that faith and that into, we might walk in the right practice in life that follows that faith. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for peace in our nation that you would grant repentance where repentance is necessary, 
for when wrongs have been done and harm given, there might be uh, the making up of that in our nation, that we might seek forgiveness and give restitution where necessary. We pray, Heavenly Father, for this region in which we live, that by your grace there might be peace and harmony in the Detroit region. We grant, pray most of all that you would use your people here to speak that word of Christ, of repentance and forgiveness in his name, and that many, many more might know his love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless all the seminarians who will be placed this week into their first calls. Grant that by your mercies they might receive these with joy and that they might be blessings to all as they proclaim your word in truth and purity. We pray that you would raise up many more young men to be pastors. For our world is waiting for a harvest. So many do not know the love of Jesus. Grant to us faithful pastors and the young men who desire to be so, that that harvest may be great. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this infection of COVID that surrounds us, that by your goodness you would remove it from our midst, and that by your grace that might finally bring people to repentance and faith as they look to you, knowing that the powers of man are limited, but you alone can remove the harm. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit when, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed the Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen.